Assalamu alaikum dear students welcome to Dr. Rumi lectures in our previous session we studied cyclic EMP second messenger system today we are going to study phospholipid second messenger system and we will also briefly talk about calcium calmodulin second messenger system in case of phospholipid second messenger system uh, when the hormone which is the first messenger binds to its receptor this receptor is uh, serpentine receptor which means it has the shape uh, like the body of a snake also called as uh, heptahelical receptor because it passes through the membrane seven times so we also call it seven pass receptor on the external part of this uh, receptor the hormone will bind and the internal part of this receptor which is the tail will be associated with the g protein which will be activated and then it will perform its action g protein here is called as gq protein in case of cyclic EMP second messenger system, the G protein is GS protein if it is stimulatory, GI if it is inhibitory. Here, G protein is called as GQ protein. Once again, this G protein is a heteromeric trimer which consists of three subunits alpha, beta, and gamma subunits. Here, alpha subunit, when it is attached with GDP, it is inactive. And when the hormone has bound with the receptor, then this G protein it will associate with the inner surface of this receptor and this G protein will be activated. When activated, then alpha subunit will detach from the beta and gamma dimer and then the alpha subunit which is attached with the GTP and is activated will activate an effector protein. In case of cyclic EMP second messenger system, this effector protein was adenyl cyclase enzyme. Here in this case, this enzyme is phospholipase C. This effector protein phospholipase C it acts on the membrane phospholipids and the lipid on which it acts is phosphatidyl and acetyl diphosphate. This lipid is present within the cell membrane and this reaction takes place within the cell membrane and this PIP2 or phosphatidyl and acetyl diphosphate is converted into two products. One is IP3 uh, also called as inositol triphosphate and the other one is DAG diacyl glycerol diacyl glycerol which is still present in the cell membrane this acts as a second messenger and this dag activates an enzyme which is called as protein kinase c when dag is not present or it is less then this protein kinase c is inactive and when dag is formed in response to this phospholipase c action then the protein kinase c will be phosphorylated and it will become activated. In case of cyclic AMP second messenger system, cyclic AMP was responsible to cause activation of the kinase protein and in that case the kinase was protein kinase A. Here this kinase enzyme is protein kinase C which is activated by the action of DAG and these kinases they are activated by phosphorylation reaction and keep in mind they are activated by phosphorylation and the phosphor comes from ATP and they are also responsible for phosphorylation of other proteins in our cell. So you can see here when this protein kinase C is activated just like protein kinase A in case of cyclic AMP second messenger system this also causes phosphorylation of other proteins which are present in the cytoplasm and most of these proteins are enzymes. When these proteins are phosphorylated then some of them are activated and some of them are inhibited and in this way they show physiological response. Moreover, some fatty acids from the DAG or diacylglycerol which is still present in the cell membrane are arachidonic acid. Arachidonic acid is a very important precursor for some substances which are called as eicosanides. For example, prostaglandins, leukotrienes, thromboxane A2. These are very important substances which perform their actions locally. For example, thromboxane A2 causes the aggregation of platelets. Leukotrienes causes constriction of bronchioles and is important in the pathophysiology of asthma. Prostaglandins, they can cause vasodilation and vasoconstriction in different tissues. As IP3 or inositol triphosphate, it is water soluble. So, this moves into the cytoplasm as compared to DAG which still remains in the cell membrane. This IP3, it has its action on the membranes of mitochondria and endoplasmic reticulum. Both of these organelles store a lot of calcium and by the action of IP3 on the IP3 gated calcium channels in both of these organelles calcium will be released. 
normally there is very less calcium concentration inside the cytoplasm of the cell as compared to outside of the cell however this calcium which is released from the mitochondria and endoplasmic reticulum it raises the concentration of calcium inside of the cell more than 100 times and this calcium is also a second messenger which in some cells can increase secretory activity in some other cells it can have contractile function calcium has its own second messenger actions in some cells it can have increased secretory activity in some other cells it can increase the contractile activity calcium level in the cytoplasm can also be increased by some voltage change in the cell membrane for example in some smooth muscles or skeletal muscles when there is voltage change there may be opening of the calcium channels which are voltage gated and hence calcium enters into the cytoplasm in some other cells calcium channels can be opened by the action of some hormones or neurotransmitters so by whatever means whether by change in voltage or by the action of neurotransmitters by hormones there is increase in the calcium level this calcium can also come from the intracellular stores from the mitochondria from endoplasmic reticulum in response to the channels which are opened by the action of ip3 now we will talk about calcium calmodulin second messenger system in the same diagram this calcium level which is increased in the cell by whatever means it will bind with a protein called as calmodulin Calmodulin is very similar in its function to troponin C which is present in our skeletal muscles. When calcium binds with calmodulin, it makes calcium calmodulin complex. Calcium has capability to bind with a maximum of 4 calcium ions. So there are 4 sites in the calmodulin molecule to which calcium can bind. So when 3 or 4 sites of this calmodulin are saturated with calcium, then this calcium calmodulin complex becomes activated. And this calcium calmodulin complex it can activate some specific kinases which are called as calmodulin specific kinases so you can see here in case of cyclic amp second messenger system the kinase enzyme is protein kinase a in case of uh, phospholipid second messenger system dag or diacylglycerol activates protein kinase c and in case of calcium calmodulin second messenger system the kinase which is activated are called as calmodulin specific kinases because the function of kinases is to cause phosphorylation so whenever these kinases they work they cause phosphorylation of proteins in the cells which means atp will provide phosphate that phosphate will attach with proteins and some of the proteins will be activated and some of them will be inhibited and many of these proteins are enzymes and in this way they will affect many metabolic functions in the cells some functions which are affected in this way by the action of calcium calmodulin in second messenger system are like opening or closure of some ion channels in the cell it can also activate the cytoskeleton proteins in the cell which can perform their own functions and it can also show smooth muscle contraction in smooth muscles when calcium calmodulin complex is formed this will activate a kinase which is called as myosin light chain kinase so when that myosin light chain kinase which is calmodulin specific is activated it will cause phosphorylation of one of the light chains of the myosin molecules and then there is interaction between the myosin and actin molecules and hence it will cause smooth muscle contraction so here we can see that dag which also activates some kinases achieves the similar function by phosphorylating the proteins and calcium which is another second messenger by using the calmodulin system it can also cause phosphorylation using some kinases to achieve the similar function now in the end I will talk about some hormones which use phospholipid second messenger system to perform their action. Some hormones from hypothalamus like gonadotropin releasing hormone, growth hormone releasing hormone, thyrotropin releasing hormone, they use this mechanism. Catecholamines which are epinephrine and norepinephrine, they use this mechanism on alpha 1 receptors, not on all the alpha receptors. What about beta receptors? Yesterday we studied beta 1 and beta 2 receptors which mechanism do they use the answer is cyclic amp second messenger system if you talk about oxytocin which is coming from the posterior pituitary also use this mechanism angiotensin 2 has two types of receptors the receptors which are present on the blood vessel they use this gq mechanism and the receptors of angiotensin 2 which are present on the nephrons of kidney they use cyclic amp second messenger system and similarly antidiuretic hormone also called as vasopressin its receptors V1 which are present on the blood vessel they use this mechanism to cause vasoconstriction and the receptors V2 which are present on the distal coagulator tubule of the nephrons of kidney they use 
cyclic ampicyclic messenger system to cause insertion of the aquaporin so that water can be retained and hence to produce concentrated urine i hope now the mechanism of action of various hormones is very clear to you this mechanism is used by the water soluble hormones and also cyclic ampicyclic messenger system is used by the water soluble hormones it is important to note that the water soluble hormones they affect the action of already present proteins inside the cell by affecting their phosphorylation by which they are either activated or inhibited lipid soluble hormones have another mechanism of action lipid soluble hormones act on the nucleus and by affecting the transcription they can either increase or decrease the synthesis of proteins thank you so much for watching this video see you next time with another video